Hi, Bintu Agne, you are first every single time. I, I gotta love you. Joe, you're back. I haven't seen you in a long time. Michael, Allie, my Shutterbug, Michelle, Tracy, Sue John, Jeff Thornrock, or not, whatever. I appreciate you being here. Party by design. Gosh, I wish we were partying. Um, but uh, I'm speaking, I'm speaking. <laughs> So today I'm speaking, and I'm going to be speaking with somebody I really admire. Uh, Dr. Shivali has written a lot of parenting books. We've spoken a lot, but she has a new book out. Here we go. It's called Super Powered. Transform Anxiety into Courage, Confidence, and Resilience. Now, this is a book for kids, but this is a book for the kid in all of us, because I think we're all having anxiety, we're all stressed out, we're all overwhelmed, we're all exasperated, we're all trying to speak without getting interrupted. Don't even, I won't go into the debate from last night, but I think that's, other than the fly, the big um, conversation I hear this morning is how many times have you been in a conversation where you keep getting interrupted? So, we're not gonna have that today. We're gonna have a beautiful conversation that'll go above the noise about courage, about confidence, about resilience, and yes, about anxiety, because that really is the dominant feeling that kids are feeling, that grown-ups are feeling. And as a mom myself, I wanna know how to manage that in my own children, how to manage it in myself, because I would be lying if I said I didn't have anxiety myself. So, um, about all kinds of things, right? We all have anxiety about all kinds of things. So I'm super excited. I think this cover is really great because it looks like a superhero book. And I love that it says super powered because we all uh, have great superpowers. And somebody gave me last year for my birthday, it wasn't somebody, Patty, gave me a, um, a picture that says, no one is you other than you, and that is your great superpower. So I guess that's the big thing, is try to let people know that who they are is actually their superpower, and then how to manage your superpower without getting consumed by your anxiety. So there's a lot of good lessons in here, key takeaways, that's what they call them, key takeaways. There are exercises to try, um, <clears throat> and uh, all about fight, Flight, freeze, I didn't hear about that till I was about 50. So it's really good uh, to know what your heart says. I think these are great conversations to be having with your children, but really with anybody that you want to hear you in life. Um, I'm just looking for Dr. Shivali, but she's not on here, but she's going to be on here. And oh, there she is. It says she's unable to join. There she is. It says coming from parent, because that's the book she wrote, The Conscious Parent. Goodness, there it is, waiting for Dr. Shivali, the conscious communicator. There she is. Hi. Hi, how are you, my friend? Good, thank you for having me over to talk about this wonderful book. I love that, thank you for having me over. This is having you over these days, <laughs> right? I would love to have you over. <laughs> I know, one day soon, one day soon. Yeah, so congratulations on this book. I was just talking uh, about it. I love the cover. Uh, it's, it's something that a kid could pick up and read. But, and it's about transforming, as I was saying, anxiety into a courage, confidence, and resilience. But even though, Dr. Shvali, this is for kids, we all can use this. Yeah, because our kids absorb our anxiety, and we don't know how to talk about anxiety in a way that touches our children's hearts and minds. You know, we are so scared of talking about big feelings. We just want to eat them away and distract them <laughs> yeah. away. I'm, I'm queen of that, eating it away. So how do we talk, first of all, to ourselves about it and then talk to our children? Well, I think the first thing that happens whenever we feel uncomfortable is we want to run away. So we want to distract, avoid, suppress, overdo something on the outside to just shove the feelings away. They're so uncomfortable. We've been trained that we need to be happy. So the first thing is how do we do the opposite? How do we lean in instead of running away? 
And our children feel this, you know, when they have big feelings, you know, we can tell them we care, but they can see us running away energetically. And that makes them feel invalidated for their big feelings. They, they feel weird for having them, bad for having them, because in many ways we do judge them. We're like, come on, just be okay, you know, be happy so I can feel good. Right. So the first thing this book teaches is to change the paradigm. Don't run away. Anxiety is not the bad guy. It's just the symptom. And it has to be there when you have all these feeding pipes that lead to it. So let's look at the things that are feeding it. Let's not talk about the anxiety. So if your child comes to you, and most children don't come and say, I'm feeling a lot of anxiety at 10 or 12. They do in their 20s, actually, as a parent of 20-something-year-olds, uh, particularly the girls, express their anxiety, like, I feel anxiety about this. What's the best way? Do you, do you just say, okay, I want to lean in. I want to hear you. It's okay. What are the first words that should come out of a parent's mouth? So before the first words, the, the main thing to do is recognize that it doesn't come out linearly, like you said. So parents often get confused and label it defiance, bad behavior, procrastination, laziness, especially now during COVID, we are labeling it all wrong. We're mislabeling our children's feelings. We don't realize that this, these are the ways anxiety speaks in children, it speaks uh, non-linearly. You know, banging of doors, hanging around on the couch, feeling listless, apathetic, talking back. You know, our kids are losing control over their environment, just like we have. But we have our go-tos at midnight. You know, we'll have our chocolate and our wine. Our kids don't have any ways to express their feelings except through some sort of symptomatic behavior, which is a good thing. It's healthier that they do it that way than the way we do it. You know, we just suppress our feelings. So first thing is to recognize it. And the second way to lean in is to create space. You know, the other day my daughter was on Zoom, supposedly studying, but she was on her phone. So I first wanted to, you know, get angry, react. The thing with anxiety is we want to control the bad feeling. So when I have anxiety or I see another one have anxiety, I want to control it in some way. So watching it rise in our body, and realizing, okay, now I'm anxious and I want to control. And typically we control it through reaction. Mm -hmm. So instead of that, we lean into the anxiety and realize, okay, maybe they're doing the best they can. Maybe my kid is anxious being on Zoom on the camera all the time. Maybe she's nervous doing it in this way. And when I lean into the isness of this crazy time that we're in, I begin to realize that controlling it is not the answer. So creating space, for all sorts of misbehavior, creating a, a room where the child feels safe to go beneath. So you could say something like, boy, you must be just so tired of what's happening right now. Even though they've just banged the door and said, I hate you, you go into the feeling wow. of beneath that and go, yeah, you know what? This whole thing just sucks. You know, you verbalize what you imagine they are going through. Try not to ask too many questions. How are you feeling? What are you feeling? Kids don't like that. They don't like to be asked. So, so if your child is like banging the door or slapping down at the table or being rude, what you're saying is don't give them a timeout right away. You're, you're actually advocating the opposite. You're advocating to try to understand without too many questions, which is challenging, right? how to get in to their world, to acknowledge that, God, I'd be banging the table too if I were you. Right, I... our children don't have the language. They don't know how to express like a 22-year-old woman. They are inarticulate, illogical, and irrational. They just use their, their actions. So we create space. We don't punish them. We don't overreact. We don't get entangled. We back off and recognize, wow, my kid is feeling a, an inordinate amount of pressure and my kid is exploding. So how can I buffer my kid? So when the kid comes down later, you know, and if you don't play with a kid's madness, their, their madness typically goes down. Um, then you can go back and go, wow, doesn't this just suck? Doesn't it feel like everything's out of control? Let's draw it out. Let's open, you know, and do an exercise from this book. This book is replete with exercises. Yeah, Let's I love fight that. You have key takeaways, you have exercises, you have a way of uh, visualizing emotions. There's a lot of drawings in here. 
that actually show different emotions uh, for people, different, you know, exercises to try with your kid. And what, how are you saying that this will build courage and resilience, Dr. Shivali? How will doing these exercises build courage? So just like in adults, when we can identify our inner voices, you know, we go, oh, that's grumpy grandma talking, talking to me again, or that's my really mean inner judge. When we identify our inner voices and we give labels to them, then we can understand, okay, it's just a part of me that's feeling this way. And I can begin a dialogue with my grumpy grandma, you know, that lives within me. In the same way, we personify these feelings for our children, we give the anxiety a name. So in this book, for example, we called her Wisty the Warrior and, and the Warrior. So when we give it a name, then the kids could say something like, oh, Wisty, Wisty was all over the place today. You know, mom, Wisty didn't leave me alone today. So just by giving it a name, it allows the, client, the, the child to feel empowered that it's a part of me, it's not all of me. And now I can have a dialogue with Wisty and go, hey, Wisty, what's up? What are you trying to tell me? So courage comes and confidence comes when we have control over our inner terrain. And by understanding our emotional space, we allow our children to not feel like these emotions have control over them. So th did you, you got together uh, with your partner here to Renee Jan to write this book. Was this anticipated before COVID or is this result of everybody being cooped up and overly anxious right now. So this, my co-author's name is Rini Jane, and she has been teaching resilience to children for a long time on her website called gozen.com. She teaches kids to become Zen. So pre-pandemic, three years ago, we were approached by publishers to write a book for kids and anxiety because even back then, the rate of anxiety was one in every five US kids was being diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. So the one, public one in five to, kids. Yeah, we didn't even go to them. They came to us and said, hey, you guys seem to be working with kids in a conscious way and with parents. Can you help us get this message out there? Because kids are falling apart. This was way back. So imagine what must be happening right now because adults are falling apart. So that's it's so interesting because, you know, we've heard recently about parents who are anxious passing on their anxiety to their children. How do we make adults more conscious that their anxiety about this situation is actually landing onto their children? You know, we, can, we can't make anyone anything, but we can just hope that they can see their own behaviors as a wake up call. You know, we are in unprecedented times of having to sit with ourselves. Yeah. This, is, this is more anxiety provoking than anything. Having to sit with oneself and be in the home, this is unprecedented for us. We like to be distracted. We like to be busy. We like to be doing. We like to think we have control over the future. All that has been taken away from us. So adults are realizing that they are inner toddlers themselves. In fact, <laughs> their, their kids are doing this better than them. So we've regressed. We are in, in post-trauma and we are highly regressed right now. And we're acting out. You know, we're, look at the, the state of the country. It's major toddler consciousness all over. The, everywhere you look, it's a toddler. So wanting attention and, and going, me, 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 me. So how to wake a parent up, Maria? I do this work, you know, for decades. To wake an adult up into consciousness is, is, is the hardest thing. They have to wake up. They have to see the anguish on their kid's face. And, and see the kid as a mirror to their own inner being and go, what am I doing to my kid? This is not about the pandemic. The pandemic is the band-aid that got ripped off, but the wounds were there from before. So right, now- The pandemic is, is actually a crack in the window, right? The pandemic is a offering to all of us, regardless of our age, to kind of quell or quiet the inner toddler in us if we're my age to have those conversations with our children, regardless of their age, to acknowledge their anxiety and then try to teach them, which is what I think is so exciting for you is that you can take your anxiety and turn it into an asset, right? Turn it into something that's not 
a negative in your life, but is a superpower ultimately, correct? Yes, yes. So the book is actually created around an acronym, POWER. And it, the premise is that we came to this world with powers, innate powers, all of us. But because of culture and our parents' conditioning, our powers were robbed from us. So the power is just quickly, P stands for presence. Every child came with the power to be present right? That's what is so annoying to, to adults because adults live in the future, kids live in the present. So we rob our children of their capacity to be in the moment. Right. Kids came completely original. You know, kids don't care about their mismatched socks and their wonky hair. They came ready to be their original selves. That's what O stands for. But you know, we are a culture of creating clones. So we, we tell our children, don't be original, become a sheep. And that's what we do to our children and dim their light. This is what happened to us. So we do it to our children. Our children came whole. They didn't know they were Japanese or black or lighter skinned or darker skinned. They came ready to love themselves. Take a two-year-old, put her in front of the mirror, and she's going to go, I'm so beautiful. But yeah. by age six, she's going to be like, look at this, look at this. Why do I have this kind of hair? Because culture infiltrates our children with a fear-based mentality. And they wow. begin feel slivered, chopped up. They're no longer whole. And what is the E? Our kids had energy when they were young, you know? But now look at them. By the time they're in school, they've lost their zest for life because they're inundated with competition and achievement and doing it right and doing it perfect. So they're like, I'd rather not do it. So we zap them of their energy. And R is resilience. And they lose their resilience because we put a grade and a number and perfectionism onto everything. Who wants to try anything if you're, not, if you're not going to do well unless you're perfect? I love that. And people here are saying, I can't get enough of this. That is so, I love the idea of promoting to your children to be an original. And I, I say that to anybody listening, you are an original. I think everything Dr. Shivali just said is important for people regardless of your age. Obviously critical to infuse that into our children but infuse that into yourself as well, because if it lands in you, if you feel that, you will transfer that to your children instead of transferring the anxiety, the fear, the apprehension, the, you know, think small, fit in, be quiet, go to your room. Oh my, my daughter. Um, but we have to acknowledge that these are unprecedented times and I love what you're saying about kind of owning and giving your children the words to own their own feelings, to honor their exasperation, to honor the fact that they can't have play dates, that they can't be in school and go on the teams that they were, that their whole life has been disrupted at a level that's unprecedented. Right, and now we're switching the narrative, you know? First we were like, study, 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 or go to college or do your SATs. And now that there aren't any SATs, for example, we're like, oh, don't worry, don't do your SATs. You know, so our kids are looking at us like, okay, you drove me crazy for so many years. And now you're just telling me I shouldn't have feelings about it. So it's a real time of reckoning for parents to decide how they want to proceed, even when things go back to normal. Do we want to go back to putting pressure on our children? Do we want to just go back into that mayhem? Or, this, or can this be a time to really examine what was dysfunctional about our old ways? Because there was a lot of toxicity. I mean, I've been talking about this stuff way back. You know, we've been overpressuring our kids. We've been robbing them of their wholeness. So this is a moment of stillness to reconcile that. Do you think it's possible for parents and kids who are in one-bedroom apartments, two-bedroom apartments, Zooming all day, working from the same location, to be Zen? It's really hard. And this is going to cause a greater divide between the elite and the not so elite. It's so difficult. But what is our choice, you know, um, to continue with the chaos or find a way to connect to yourself? You know, you, being Zen is, doesn't cost money. It's really the cheapest thing. You just have to pop on a meditation video, go to Deepak Chopra. I have tons of courses, you know, and we, I do free meditation. I teach meditation every day for free or every week. Uh, on this other website, they can find me. Many people are helping people do it for free. So yeah. finding the Zen is the first thing we need to do as parents. 
so that we can create confidence and resilience with our children. Well, I want to thank you so much, Dr. Shivali, for being here, for talking about this book. Let me just say again, it, first of all, it looks great. Uh, it's called Super Power to Transform Anxiety into Courage, Confidence, and Resilience. And in looking through it, um, I don't have little children. Uh, I have big children, and we're talking a lot about anxiety. Uh, I'm talking to myself a lot about anxiety, to my friends, uh, to people I work with about anxiety. So I think these um, drawings, these exercises, all of this and the challenges really are to all of us. So it's a book to get even if you don't have little kids, but if you know a friend who does, it's a great book to gift. I know exactly where this is going after I dog ear it. But um, I want to thank you so much for all of your efforts to help parents uh, out there. You've been at this so long as a conscious parent yourself, but bringing this into the mainstream is such a gift, really, because uh, we're so left on our own as parents, right? You know, you're giving your kid, I was just talking to my daughter about that, they send you home and you're like, go, go, have fun, you know? And we're often so scared to make a mistake, right? That we, our fear is what we actually hand down and instead of our wholeness, instead of our originality, instead of our light, instead of all of the wonderful things that uh, Dr. Shivali talks about. But the fact is she's here to guide you. So she wasn't there when my kids were little, but she's here now. Uh, so I wanna thank you. I wish you lots of luck with this book. Thank and we will, so stay, oh, we will stay in connection. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Get thank super you. There, there you go. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank so, you much. so much, Dr. Right. And we're going we're gonna to put this up in the Sunday paper this Sunday so you can read it and hear it again and perhaps um, share this book or share this information with somebody that you love, somebody that you care about who may be struggling with um, anxiety but who wants to turn it into courage and resilience and confidence. And who doesn't want that? I mean, who does not want to turn their anxiety into courage, confidence, and resilience? I know I do. So I want to thank Dr. Shivali. I hope you guys are subscribed to the Sunday paper. If you're not, please go to mariashriver.com and sign up. It's our free uh, Sunday newsletter. We started putting it out during the week because people asked us for it, and it's doing well. And uh, Sherry Lyons, she's an ambassador for the Sunday paper, said, put up the Conscious Parenting book, too. I don't have that with me, but she wrote the Conscious Parent, uh, and you can get that. Um, we'll put that up in the Sunday paper, too, actually. So um, people are saying I could have used this book back in March. Well, it wasn't out. So as soon as it was out, we brought it to you. So, and once again, it'll be in the Sunday paper and you can go to Dr. Shivali's own website. As she said, um, she has uh, meditation there. And also Dr. Jen, who I guess also has a lot on here about how to create Zen children. So that's really great. So thank you all so much for joining in. Have a good Thursday. God bless.